Today, I'm going to be talking about the most liminal backrooms levels. These are the levels that have the eeriest, liminal, familiar vibe that I've gone over. So if you enjoy this compilation, leave a like, and I will see you at the end of the video. Let's get into it. Backrooms level 94, aka level motion, is classified as a survival difficulty of 3 and is overall pretty unsafe in general. It takes the appearance of a couple of different things ranging from a big town to a stone castle to green rolling hills and all of the level is covered in a retro grainy type effect. Kind of like an old movie or a video game. And the entire level is almost like Dreamcore in a way. I know some of y'all like that. The part of the level where the main town is, is pretty safe, especially during the daytime, since there aren't any entities here, but at nighttime, it can get pretty dicey. In the very center of this town, in the main area, there's actually a fountain that's flowing with almond water, which is kind of cool, I'm not gonna lie. Wanderers have described the feeling of this town as kind of a 1930s stop-motion background, which is pretty campy and cool, to say the least. On the outskirts of the town, there are small houses with furniture and other normal house stuff. There's also retro cars and vans from the 1930s time period. And there's even huge milk vans full of almond milk for the lactose intolerant crowd among us. Oh, you said among us, funny, funny. Scattered around the town's roads, there are these things that look like siren poles, but they're actually speakers. And they play really old campy cartoon music sometimes. Specifically, the sirens only play the music during these safe times, which is daytime, on the level. And then the music will play until nighttime, when it gets really unsafe and unstable, and lots of entities start to come out. But I'm gonna explain those entities during the entity explanation section of the video. The grassy hills of the level are actually infinite, and they just keep repeating themselves over and over again. But sometimes there will be like a random car parked on the side of the road, or you might run into a water tower that's just there. And sometimes on the top of the hills themselves are just random pieces of furniture, like chairs or tables, just sitting there. Which is pretty unsettling, I gotta be honest with you. But it's not as unsettling as the transparent hills that are there. Hills that you can literally see through that have castles sitting on top of them. That's terrifying. I mean, that'd be pretty trippy. Like, just imagine walking up to an invisible hill that you can see through and seeing a whole castle just on top. I'm not even sure how, like, my brain would process that, but whatever. You can actually walk up the Invisa Hill, get it? Invisible Hill, and get to the castle. But the castle area specifically is known for draining sanity, so be sure to carry almond water with you so you don't go off the deep end. Inside of the castle, you'll notice that there is a huge funhouse area. In fact, the entire castle itself is a funhouse, playhouse, whatever you want to call it. It's full of playsets, slides, ballrooms, ball pits, and you know the other typical funhouse stuff. If you wander through this castle enough, you'll actually run into a huge doorway that opens into the throne room, where of course the entity called the Animated King lives. Now, you'll be tricked into a false sense of security by the animated king because he seems nice and stuff at first, but he'll actually try to control you instead of helping you. So watch out for that. The animated king will put you through a test before he turns you into an animation entity, which I'll get into what an animation is in a second. But if you pass this test, you might be sent out of the level, and if you fail, well, you're probably not going to be leaving anytime soon. Now let's get into some creatures, shall we? So there are actually a lot of entities and creatures here, and they're very dangerous, especially in nighttime. As per usual, you got your regular entities like Smilers, Skin Stealers, Hounds, and Male Death Moths, and even Death Rats, which are slightly less common, but still pretty common. But the level exclusive entity, like I said, is called an animation. These things look like stop-motion characters, but they're very hostile because they attack anything that isn't animated, which is pretty creepy, not gonna lie. And they attack victims based off of what they look like themselves. So like if an animation entity is a claymation character, then it will try to drown its victim in clay, what? Or if the animation entity is like wood or something like that, then it will try to hit its victim with blunt force, and so on and so forth. You get the point. They aren't very smart though, so you can pretty much avoid them with ease. Just make sure you don't get caught by them or, 
you know, you'll drown in clay or be beat over the head by a bat. The other level exclusive entity is called the Robomen, which are just retro robot toys from the early 1900s that live inside the castle and they kind of act like the guards of the castle and they're really hostile and will instantly attack you if they see you. So just avoid the large walking robots. To enter this weird place, you have to successfully escape the end level and then go to the hub level right after. When you're there, a rectangle hole will just manifest itself in the ground inside of the hub and it'll slowly start to close over time. And if you want to exit, you can either complete the Animated King's trial and pass it by conquering your fears in animated form, or you can get teleported into level 7, 9, or 53 by randomly going into one of the houses on the hills in the level. So to summarize this pretty interesting level, pretty cool level as well, it's pretty much just a dream core world filled with weird animated glitchy type things that kind of makes you feel peaceful and at home until you get to the literal invisible hill with the castle on it where you'll be forced to watch your biggest fears unfold in animation. If you pass, then you can leave, and if you don't, then you're condemned to stay here forever as an animation entity. Pretty neat! So the pool rooms is a level from the fandom, actually, and it's level 37. It's split up into a couple different zones, which I'll get into later, and they all vary depending on how safe they are or how dangerous they are. The first zone I want to talk about is called the safe zone, shocker, and it's classified as a class zero difficulty and is devoid of anything that could possibly hurt you, unless you like hate water or something, then I don't know what to tell you. This zone looks like a maze of white tiled walls and rooms that are filled at varying depths of room temperature water. The water itself is clean and could theoretically be consumed, but uh, I don't know if I would want to try that, to be honest with you. The entire level has no actual light source, no light fixtures in the ceilings, and the only light that comes into the level is from some random windows that just shine bright light into the halls and then from there it reflects off into the water. This level's day-night cycle has it day for 16 hours and night for 8 hours and during those day hours the windows will appear perfectly white so you won't be able to see outside of them you'll just be able to see like a white sheet of light and at nighttime they'll turn completely black. The deeper you go into this level, the deeper the water itself gets and the less light gets there. A weird thing about the safe zone's walls is that they actually damper and dampen any sound from entering or moving around. And the only sound you'll be able to hear is the water splashing from your legs or feet or, you know, if you're swimming, you'll hear that water. Earlier, I said that this part of the level was completely safe and devoid of entities, which is mostly true, except there's been some reports of wanderers hearing weird noises from an unknown source, and sometimes they've even said that something was watching them from the shadows? That's uh, pretty creepy. The main theory is that people have been hearing sounds coming from the danger zone, since the walls in the danger zone actually amplify sound unlike the walls of the safe zone, which dampen sound. The tiles here in the safe zone actually have another weird quirk, where they reflect light from the windows into different colors, like neon colors, which then can be reflected into the water and thereby changes the color of the water to your eyes. Pretty trippy. The last thing about this zone is that there's actually almond water that drips down from the ceiling, which leads some people to believe that there's a huge store of almond water above this part of the level, which would be pretty cool, but again, it's just a theory. The next part of the level is actually called the Main Center, which, as its name suggests, is just the exact center location of the level, and it looks like a huge room with water on the floor, just like the safe zone, except this time, there's actually platforms that are above the water that people can stand on, which is nice if you're tired of getting wet. This area typically is like a landmark to wanderers and a good place to meet up or a good place to rest. There's even food and other supplies here too, and these supplies will actually refill themselves if they're all taken every hour or so. But the most important thing about this zone is that it has the ability to restore your sanity, 
which if you know anything about the back rooms, sanity is very important. The last zone for the pool rooms is called the danger zone, and well, it's dangerous. It's classified as a class 4 difficulty, and it's very unsafe and very unsecure, and it's pretty much exactly like the safe zone, except the walls are dark blue and black, and not white, and they're more cramped and claustrophobic. It's also extremely dark here, and in some cases, it's actually pitch black, and like I said earlier, the tiles amplify every sound, so it's really disorienting, because everything echoes really loudly. The water here is also worse than before, because earlier you could theoretically drink the water, but if you drink the water here, you'll get severe stomach aches. On top of all that, this section actually makes your sanity drop really quickly, which obviously isn't good. But yeah, that's it for the danger zone. It's like the first safe zone, but dangerous. There are actually three colonies that call this level home. The first one is called the Lifeguards, which pretty much is a group of around 90 members who live in that main area where the platforms are. They refuse to trade with outsiders, but they will save anyone's life who's drowning or seems to be struggling in any way. The next group is called the Swimmers, and they have around 60 members, and literally they just teach people how to swim around the level, like that's it. The last group is called the Republic, and they live in the danger zone. They're armed, but they're friendly, and they'll protect you from any hostile entities that might be attacking. Speaking of entities, the entities here are the typical ones, like Smilers, Skin Stealers, and Wretches, but there's one more called the Glitchton, which is a really rare entity, but it's also very dangerous. They look like a humanoid skeleton, but they have neon bones, and also they have a metal arm. They're very aggressive when attacking, and their main threat that they cause is that they can hear very well, so if you're splashing around or whatever, they'll probably come to you. And they wear clothing that's been dipped in liquid silence, so you can't hear them, which is terrifyingly creepy. Like, imagine just being there, and turning around, and seeing a skeleton with a metal arm just standing right behind you. Creepy. To enter this level, you can noclip into level negative 33, or you can noclip into the bottom of an empty pool from level 823, if you want to come here. And to exit, you can find a cylinder stairway and walk up those stairs to be sent to level negative 33, or you can just noclip into any wall that you can in the safe zone area to be sent to level 7. Easy peasy. Alright, now that I've talked about the level itself, I want to show you this pool rooms found footage that was inspired by this level entry. The footage comes from a YouTuber named Jared Pike. It's a cool name because, you know, my name's Jared too. This footage is actually really cool and I recommend you go check it out for yourself if you want to watch the entire thing. But in the video, we can see the safe zone area with the white tiles and shallowish water. And we can also see the main room area with the platforms. We don't get any footage inside of the danger zone, but we can see the entrances to the danger zone where it starts to get dark. And you can tell that this footage was based off of the pictures from the Phantom's entry, which is always pretty cool. And uh, I think it's really dope. And you should definitely go check out Jared's channel because this found footage is really cool. And I don't know, it's something about this water liminal space in the back rooms that just seems cool. And seeing it, you know, brought to life in found footage form is just pretty dope. Go check it out, the link will be down below. Backrooms level 15 is classified as a class 0 level and is safe, secure, and has no entities. Now you might think, how is the level crazy if there's nothing there? Well, you'll see in a second, trust me. The level is made up of a bunch of futuristic style hallways with shiny reflective surfaces. There are also some sections of the level that are completely dark with no lights and you can't even see in them at all, but those are pretty rare. Throughout the hallways, you can faintly hear the sound of engines roaring in the distance. Now these machines or engines are inside of rooms that are sealed shut with big doors. These doors can be opened up though if you want to explore around them. There's a bunch of different machines in this level and they range in size from being as small as a computer or being the size of an entire room it just depends on which one you're looking at and these machines actually can manufacture real objects like some produce steel rods but there are
there are some of them that seemingly make nothing, but still move. It's weird. Now, people originally thought that the hallways were infinite, but it's now known that there's just so many hallways and it seems like it's infinite, but it's not actually. It's around 6,000 kilometers squared, to be exact. All of the rooms and the halls are made out of white concrete floors with reflective steel walls and roofs and steel beams holding it all up. On the ceiling and some of the walls, there are these really bright lights that reflect off of all the surfaces that make it really eerie and futuristic looking. And the only thing that breaks up this really monotonous color scheme is an occasional body just laying there on the ground. Yeah, that's uh, pretty terrifying. These bodies are people and they're all dressed in lab coats. And on top of this, there's also makeshift weaponry found near them almost every time. And some of the bodies have signs of gunfire wounds and it's unknown what happened here or why they're there, but they've been there for a long time. Now, earlier I was talking about the engine rooms that can produce stuff, but those aren't the only types of rooms here. In fact, there's labs, cafeterias, bedrooms, kitchens, and even control rooms scattered around the level. Most of the rooms have no furniture or anything on the ground, but some of them look like entire wars happen there. Just a huge war scene. In some of those rooms, there's also computers, and on this level, there's always a Wi-Fi signal that you can connect to. That'll come into play later. But yeah, some of the rooms have computers. But the weird thing is the files on these computers are in an unknown language, which honestly is pretty terrifying. I mean, you have all these corpses and weapons, and now you got these computers with weird languages. I, I don't know, man. I guess a good thing is that there's been no entity seen here alive, except there is one room with corpses of hounds stacked up on top of each other the entire height of the ceiling. What even is this level, bro? Like, what? Now, the way this level was discovered was by a wanderer who came here from level 10 and ended up in a big control room. That wanderer's name is Onrik, and we're about to get into his story now. Now, this big control room had access to the rest of the level, so, you know what, Onrik just set up a camp in that big room and decided to explore. But after two days of exploring, the door that he came to the level in shut by itself and literally won't open. And it hasn't opened for two entire years so this guy has been stuck in this entire level for two whole years now the good news is that the computers in the rooms do have internet access and meg has been able to send books you know correspondence games and you know stuff like that to keep him sane while he's stuck here he's documented his entire stay on the level and to this day he's still alive and is trying to explore more of the level and crack the code of the unknown language on the computer files and as for bases on this level the only base here is onrik's base but there has been remnants of other camps that onrik has found but they look like they were abandoned a long time ago there's also some computer scanning graphs that onrik has taken and some readings that he's gotten and the data is actually on the wiki dot if you want to go read it, but I'll show you the picture of some of the scans because I'm not going to go through it. It's 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 a lot. My question is, why is this level like a battle zone? You know, where's the bodies of the scientists? Why are they there? And why are hounds stacked up in a room? And why are there bullets everywhere? I don't know. Lots of questions here, but there's no one else that's ever been here that has any correspondence with Meg except Onrik. So let me know down below. Also, the only entrance to this level was found by Onrik himself, and so far, he's the only person to ever enter here and be alive. So, we still don't know how those scientists got there, we still don't know how the hounds got there, we don't know anything. But the way he entered was by this big wall on level 10 turned the same material and color as the shiny white walls here. So when he noticed that, a door appeared in that white wall on level 10, so he just walked through it, and he came to here, level 15. And after a few days, the door shut and trapped him here. It's creepy. So this level actually has two descriptions on the wiki dot. One of them is in writing on this paper kind of thing from the first person narrative of the person who discovered the level. And the other one is just the normal level description. So for ease of access, I'm going to read the normal level description instead of the written narrative one. But you can... Go check that out if you want to, I mean, if you're into that kind of thing. Level 25 is classified as a class 0 difficulty and is a safe level for the most part. The level itself looks like an old arcade that's been robbed, beaten, abandoned, weathered, you know, it's dilapidated. The level has huge empty rooms with old arcade machines everywhere inside. 
and there's dust on the floors, on the arcades, on the walls, everything, which leads people to believe that it's really old. There's also random shelves nailed into the wall, which is completely random. The arcade machines and games here are from the 1980s, and almost all of them have either been broken or cracked or ripped apart by something, and only about 1 in 1500 games even works, but the ones that do work can be used as exits from the level. If you put a coin into the game and then play it, you can be sent out of the level with that arcade machine. Like it goes to, wherever you go it'll follow. But like I said, lots of the games are so old and broken that it's just iffy if they even work. There aren't any bases here in this massive abandoned arcade, and to enter it, you can find an arcade machine that somebody else used to exit on any given level, and then you can play that game to be sent here, and the machine will follow you. Or you can find a janitor's closet on level 4, and you can walk into it to be sent here, and to exit the level, just use an arcade machine, and it'll send you to one of these levels. Level 0, 5, 9, 10, 11, 19, 24, 29, 37, 50, 90, 108, 120, 141, 150, 165, 188, 201, 790, and 888. You got that? But yeah, that's it for the explanation. It's a really simple level. It's short and sweet. It's just a liminal, old, abandoned arcade. Classic backrooms, right? Level 6999 is classified as a class habitable and is literally 100% safe. Like, <laughs> there's nothing here that can hurt you. I mean, unless you can't swim. This level has a kinda similar mythos and story as the Promised Land does, where it's a level that everyone seeks out and tries to get to, but no one knows how to get here or where the entrance is or anything like that. So it's safe to say that the level is pretty much a hot commodity. Think of it like an oasis in a desert. Everyone wants to be here, but it's virtually impossible to find, and it's mainly talked about through whispers and stories throughout the backrooms. The methods used to actually get here are very strange, and so far, it's only thought that two people ever have made it here, uh, but even then, no one knows if it's even real, or if it's just a figment of people's imaginations. The level first started to be rumored to exist back in 2019, and that is when apparently the first person got here. The physical description of this area looks like a never-ending complex with roofs and walls made out of rooms with pools in the middle. On the outside of these pools, there are chairs and tables and lanterns and lights in the corners of the floor and in the ceiling. And these lanterns and lights are responsible for most of the lighting here. The level almost feels futuristic in a way. Like, it's almost too clean and precise to be from the modern time, but it's the back rooms, so no, no one knows what time it takes place in. Most of the time, this level is colored in purple, but apparently sometimes it can be red, pink, yellow, blue, and even blacked out. So it just depends on what time you go there, I guess. As you can expect, it is foretold that this level has abundant tools and supplies laying around, like almond water and such, on top of there being chill pools that you can relax in here. It almost seems too good to be true in a way. The pools are said to go very deep, deeper than the pool rooms pools, just said pools like 15 times, and they aren't actually made out of water, but instead it's a water-like substance. Getting into these pools is like an instant sanity cleanse because it calms you down and helps you relax and chill out and forget about your anxieties. Kind of like the fountain of youth that rejuvenates you in a way. The pools are also emitting a relaxing water flowing noise that can help you just chill out fully and fall asleep even. Apparently there's also an entity or two that just float around in the pools, but they're assumed to be passive and they won't attack you and they're actually facelings and they kind of just float around. To enter, as I said, it's not known all the tasks and all the stuff you have to do to get here or what you have to do in order to do anything because this level might not exist, no one knows. To exit, you have to ask one of the facelings that you saw in the pools to send you away and they will. But yeah, the reason I actually like this level is because of how mysterious it is. You know, I feel like the whispers floating around the back rooms of this perfect level where you can finally relax and finally chill, I feel like that's pretty cool. And it's kind of like a heaven area for the back rooms, you know, something for people to look forward to and have a purpose. It would give pretty much any wanderer something to look forward to finding and it would give them something to hope for and maybe even give them purpose. 
Or, all of it could be fake, and there could be no such thing as the neon pool rooms. Uh, but it would be cool if there was. Maybe one day we'll know for sure. But as I mentioned and hinted at earlier in the video, it's actually thought that you can get to this neon pool rooms level from the main pool rooms level, but no one knows the exact way to do that. But those two people I said that have been here supposedly came from the pool rooms and got there. So if you're lucky enough, you might jump into those crazy pool rooms and be sent here, which would probably be more relaxing uh, because it doesn't get dark or scary or anything like that. It's just a bunch of infinite liminal pools that are, have purple lighting. I mean, literally, how much better can a level get? How much more relaxing can it get? Backrooms level 974 is classified as class 1, safe, secure, and is devoid of entities, except one entity, obviously. The level has several decently sized rooms, and they all have the same pink color scheme throughout. There's no doors that lead to the quote-unquote outside of the level, and there's also no windows that look outside. Where the windows are, there are paintings that would represent what is outside, so there's no windows. The level isn't very big, and there's only a few rooms that can even be accessed fully. There's a normal sized bedroom, a master bedroom, two bathrooms, a living room, and a dining room with a kitchen right next to it. The plumbing on this level and electricity both work, and there's even a good Wi-Fi connection. Nice. So wanderers are encouraged to use these amenities because the next levels are not going to be very safe. I made videos about level 998 and level 999, so if you want to go check those out, they're pretty crazy. They'll be in the description below. The entire level is decorated with a pastel pink color, and there's these characters that are from reality that are on the walls as well, like Senrio and Senex. No clue what those are, but cool. There's also some consumable stuff on this level inside of the pantry and the refrigerator. The food is always in good condition as well, and it can be eaten, and whenever something's taken from the pantry or the fridge, it replaces itself by an unknown means. Nice. Obviously, the only entity here is named Kitty. Kitty is about 3.2 meters tall, or around 10 feet tall, and is a humanoid entity with extremely long limbs, and they've got no hands or feet, so it's just sticks. Nice. Kitty's skin is matte black, and it kind of looks like leather, and there are no visible facial features on Kitty. However, it seems like the entity can hear and smell, just like normal people can, but it's unknown how. Kitty moves extremely smoothly and quickly, like disturbingly quickly and smoothly, and is known to jump scare wanderers who don't know that it lives here, but so far, Kitty's not shown any aggression towards people yet, and just watches wanderers from a distance with kind of a curious attitude. There are no bases here, and the only way to enter the level is if the wanderer has quote-unquote something cute in their possession when they travel between two different levels. And if they do have something cute on them when they travel between two different levels, there's a small chance they'll be sent here. To exit this level, you have to give Kitty that cute item that you had that brought you here. Once you do, you'll wake up on a safe level. So make sure you've got cute stuff on you, I guess. So to summarize, Kitty's house is a level that's just the inside of a house with a pink theme and cute artwork all over the walls. The level has food and water available and the plumbing and electricity and Wi-Fi all work pretty well, and it's safe to rest in. And the only entity here is Kitty, who's a giant slender humanoid that doesn't attack but still looks pretty creepy. Nice. Probably all seen this image before. It's an empty library with the end is near on the wall. But did you know that it was a backrooms level? In fact, it's an enigmatic level, so you already know it's going to be pretty wacky. The end is classified as a class undetermined, and is pretty much a trap level. Meaning that it gives you fake illusions that you've escaped the back rooms. These illusions can really mess with your mind because you think they're real, but they're not. The library itself is extremely quiet, which in and of itself can make you go insane, and the only noises that you can hear come from computers that buzz loudly. Now, as if the level couldn't get any worse, there's literally no way to leave the level that we know of because of the physical properties that do not obey any physics or any Euclidean properties, and it makes exploring pretty much impossible. For example, you could just be walking in a completely straight line, but you'd actually be going in circles. Or you could be walking straight and then turn around and just face plant right into a wall. Pretty confusing. Now the abnormal physics and the quietness are bad, don't get me wrong, but the fake realities are way worse and way more detrimental to your mental health and physical health. Fake realities are highly personalized areas inside of the end that look like places that you've been to or places that you're familiar with from real life. The level can also replicate actual objects and people too, and it's all tangible and can be interacted with. So it literally seems real. 
and every fake reality that's been documented exists in similar areas and they seem to share these transitional spaces that kind of blur together like borders and these are where the two fake realities will meet if you walk through one of those areas that reality will disappear and you'll be back in the library part but for real though hallucinating places that you've been or people that you know would be terrible especially since you think it's real so you would literally think that you're back in reality it's also important to note that pretty much anything that uses wi-fi or electricity doesn't work here so you can't radio for help or call for help or do anything the only thing that does work that has any technology is those computers that are scattered around the level but they're also really dangerous because for some reason entities specifically party goers like to hang out near them and capture prey but some think that if you go on one of those computers and you run a specific .exe file on there then you'll be sent to reality obviously no one knows if it works or not but that would be pretty cool there is actually surprisingly one base here called the junkies this one's pretty sad, but it's a ragtag group of six people who live inside of the fake reality areas of the level. They won't trade with you unless you give them memory juice, and they spend their entire day and night, pretty much their entire lives, high on memory juice inside of fake realities, pretending that they're in the real world. Wow, that's, that's sad, bro. To enter this level, you actually have a chance of entering here by going through any door that has a neon exit sign on it. And like I said earlier, there isn't even a confirmed exit, but it is theorized that you can no clip inside of one of those fake realities and you'll be sent to another level, but it's unknown and risky. Backrooms level negative 69, or the roads to abyss, is classified as a class 1A obstructive, which means that it's safe, has no creatures or entities, but has a very strange abstract environment that could be potentially dangerous. The level also has another nickname, which is the Foggy Avenue, because it looks like a huge, expansive landscape of nothing but metropolitan roads, bridges, overpasses, that kind of stuff, with fog everywhere. So, the Foggy Avenue. The level is kind of laid out similarly to a huge dystopian city, but without the buildings. And it's like this because of how many roads there are that overlap each other, go into the ground, come out of the ground. It just seems so awe-inspiringly big. And that thick layer of fog never leaves the level, and it's really just everywhere at all times. It makes it impossible to see to the sky, so no one knows it's up there. And it also makes it really hard to see far in front of you. I mean, you can hardly even see 10 feet in front of you. And the fog itself can be any color but the main common colors are orangish or bluish and sometimes a mix of both the actual architecture here is pretty weird too because the roads and the bridges are made out of normal concrete and that kind of stuff from real life but it's all stiff and foreign looking to humans it looks almost like a blank slate for something that's not done yet and there's nothing except the roads signs stoplights and stop signs and stuff like that and just this unfinished unrefined look on top of all that weird stuff some of the bridges and overpasses have these really weird geometric patterns carved into the sides of them which leads some people to speculate that this level wasn't created by humans that it was created by another race of something like aliens some places look like there should be skyscrapers there or some kind of building but there's nothing just a huge concrete slab and there's no buildings at all on this level there also aren't any vehicles either though the entire level is made up out of roads there's no cars to be on them which is cool and weird most of the actual roads don't have any visible starting point or stopping point but there are some that pop out of the ground in random places and go straight up or sideways or right back into the ground it uh, it's weird there are also traffic lights, stop signs, yield signs, intersection signs, and stuff like that placed in extremely random locations as well. And some of the lights aren't even at street corners or intersections. And they're just placed in the middle of the road randomly where there wouldn't even need to be a stop sign or stop light. So it makes us all question, what are the purposes of these lights? And why are they randomly placed? Some of the roads are looping and twirling. They almost look like roller coasters, which just adds to the confusion of trying to map out this level, 
But because unlike in normal real life cities, where the roads are laid out in grid patterns or similarly recognizable patterns, this level has no pattern. There is no method to this level. It's completely random and you can't even map it out or understand it because there's no usable geometry to do it with. Some think that in the past there might have been a group of people that lived here but fled for some reason, which leaves the level with this sort of post-apocalyptic feel. But that might not be true because there's not any graffiti or anything like that here, or marks in general. In fact, there's not even any chips in the concrete, no potholes, no chunks missing, no weathering of any kind. It doesn't exist here. And since nothing is broken or chipped, and none of the concrete looks sunbaked or broken whatsoever, the level is thought to be maybe invincible to time. Time might not affect stuff here. And the level is also constantly nighttime, so that'll help with not fading things away. The level also has some other anomalous features, which I'm about to get into. The first one is that it is impossible for two people to be sent to the same spot here at the same time. So if you and a friend no clip from a different level to try to get here, you will not end up in the same spot. Even if you no clipped from the same spot, you'll be sent to opposite sides of this level, and this level is infinite, so there's no point in finding them. The next anomalous feature is that fog that I talked about. It's the main anomaly here, well, because it's always there, and because it can change completely in color depending on where you are in the level. It could be in one section and it could be blue, and then 600 feet over, it could be orange. It all depends. The fog also induces this feeling of paranoia and anxiousness, and it makes you feel like you're being watched, because you can't really see into it or see past it, so you never know what's lurking in there looking at you. And those feelings of paranoia and stuff like that are amplified when the level starts to randomly play all the music throughout its streets. Yes, that's right. The third anomaly is this random music that comes out of nowhere just when the wanderer is at their most paranoid point. That's when it starts, is when you're getting real paranoid. And that just pushes you right over the edge to insanity, I would say. And these next two anomalies that are the last ones add a really strange level of creepiness to this level. The first one is called the Upside down no not stranger things and the other one is called the lights so this upside down is an anomaly where randomly the entire level inverts itself into two halves one half's on the ground and one is in the sky both versions have a gravity field and they can both be walked on if you can somehow get up there but after a few minutes the upside down anomaly will just disintegrate and leave anyone who is up there at the top falling into the void now that's really tough isn't it the last anomaly is the lights, and they look like these sparkling fireworks in the sky. Uh, the cause for them isn't known, and they only happen a few times a year, but uh, no one knows anything about them. So there's not much to say. There are no outposts here, and to enter this level, you can come from the regular level 69, which is just a huge straight road with concrete walls on each side, and to exit, you can get up in the upside down part at the top and fall down into the void to maybe be sent out, we don't know. Or out of nowhere, this level can send you out with no warning to level 413. No one knows how this happens or where it happens or why, it just does, and you can just be randomly sent there. That's pretty neat.